What other equipment and materials do I need for projection mapping my house for the holidays? You will probably want to invest in a media player. You could connect and play your show off a laptop, but many people don't want to do this for the added problems of security it presents. Some cheaper projectors can read media files straight off a USB plugged in the back, but many projectors need an HDMI input either from a laptop or a media player. A media player is a little device which is relatively inexpensive. You can load your video files onto an SD card or USB thumb drive and plug it into the media player and then connect the media player to your projector, usually via HDMI. Watch out for the resolution capability of your media player. For example, if you want to project 4K content, Check that 4K is supported by the media player. An extremely useful feature for a media player to have is the ability to loop seamlessly so your show can play over and over, so look out for this. Some people use a Raspberry Pi as a media player. A Raspberry Pi is a very small, low-cost computer. You can run software on the Raspberry Pi called Falcon Player, formerly Falcon Pi Player and often abbreviated to FPP. It's free software that allows you to sequence a playlist of media and even schedule when it will play. There are plenty of tutorials and blog posts about how to set this up online. Now what do you need in terms of a laptop or computer to do house mapping? Even if you aren't going to use a laptop for playback, you're still likely to need a machine on which to edit and create your show. Video editing and animating effects can be quite strenuous on a machine. I'd recommend you check the minimum requirements of all the software you intend to use in your projection mapping workflow and use those as a guide to what you will need. Let's take After Effects as an example. It gives minimum and recommended requirements for both Windows and Mac OS. It wants a multi-core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, ideally 32, a graphics card with at least two gigs of VRAM, ideally four, and at least 15 gigs of disk space. Since these are minimum specs, go higher if you can. More RAM and a better graphics card will give you better performance. You will likely need an HDMI cable or equivalent depending on what your projector accepts as a media input. You will also need extension cables that are rated for outdoor use. If you are very concerned about your cables in wet conditions, you might consider extension cord gaskets and a connection protector box. You might also want cable covers to reduce tripping hazards. You need to put some kind of opaque material in your windows in order to catch the projection. Otherwise, the light will simply go straight through the glass. When you're thinking about what to use in your windows, bear in mind that any bumps and folds in the covering will produce distortion. So usually the aim is to make it smooth and without creases. Your options include paper, or cardboard, and a lot of people use cheap frosted shower curtains. Some people use perforated vinyl so that you can still partially see out of the windows, because remember, unless you're going to take the window coverings down each night, they'll be in place for as long as you want to run your show. That's why some people opt for removable options like pull-down shades or fabric stretched over frames which can be hung in the window. House projection mapping isn't something you can launch into and perfect in a short amount of time. This isn't for you if you're looking for quick results. You're going to need patience and a willingness to learn a new skill, which can sometimes be challenging, but also very rewarding. If this video helped you, say thanks by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next video.